Imagine with me driving to my next destination. Then all of a sudden, someone cuts me off, flips me off as though it's my fault, and I narrowly miss a serious accident. Their anger explodes, my anxiety skyrockets, my heart's racing, I can't think clearly, I can't catch a deep breath to think about being successful at my next destination. We know that 18,000, over 18,000 car accidents happen every day in the United States because of road rage. That means that road rage throws people into unsettledness, 36,000 or more every day into anger, anxiety, depression, sadness. Let's dig deeper into our communities where we find that 40 million Americans are diagnosed with anxiety disorders. That doesn't include you and me having anxiety on the road, right, or sitting in the dentist's chair. We may reach for music to calm down, to cope, to relax. Does it really work? Think of situations where anger explodes I was watching the game where the Carolina Panthers, you know, were starting constant fights with the 49ers, and the 49ers refused to be triggered. The Panthers lost to the 49ers 10 to 23. Another incident of anger versus calm turned out very differently. A father who was communicating with his daughter via text before the movie started was shot and killed in a movie theater. Is it really about gun control? Or is it more about mood control? Active shooter incidences have tripled in our country. Talked about anger and anxiety. Depression may cause the, the number one death by injury, suicide. Today, more than 22 veterans will commit suicide. And tomorrow, and the next day. When we sink into depression without relief, our emotional shape flatlines. The other red shape are those stuck in anxiety or anger. The healthy black line represents the emotional shape of people that exercise mood control, whose lifestyles are not thrown into anger, anxiety, depression, or sadness. So how do we relieve this unsettledness? What is the answer? We know that many people use medication. It's an epidemic. One employee assaulted a doctor because the doctor would not give his wife the medication he believed that she needed. Medication may not be the most effective solution. Only one out of seven people using antidepressant drugs will improve, whereas one out of four using music therapy for depression will improve. Music therapy is non-threatening and non-invasive. As a board-certified music therapist, I presented a music medicine program to 57 military security cops at the request of their commander just five days before being deployed to Iraq. 88% of these soldiers completed the self-assessment, health risk self-assessment, to find out what their emotional shape was, and it was not that black healthy line. Usually up to 98% of troops will not fill out that kind of assessment, because they're afraid that they'll be treated differently by their commander or by their fellow troops. During this presentation, the soldiers sought to arm themselves differently with music to stay balanced in the theater, to ward off that combat stress and that imminent PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Anticipating extreme unsettledness, I used the three-part formula of music medicine to immediately support these military men and women feeling better immediately. And this was the first song they heard.
This excerpt was not heard by the soldiers because it was more recently arranged by my brother Dan Pinkerton. What the soldiers heard was Amazing Grace played by bagpipes, and they experienced their funeral. It matched their unsettled states and allowed them to express it out in a healthy way. When we instinctively push play on music, we're matching our mood as well. We're validating where we're at. Or we're avoiding the music that will trigger us into feelings that we don't want to feel, and then we stuff them and repress them, and that is not healthy. So what is healing music? Many people will say relaxing music, but that is only one of three parts to effectively harness the power of music for mental fitness. The first step for choosing healing music is to understand what resonates with you and why. Music therapists are trained to understand the why and the what, as well as the how, where, and when. In music therapy, it is the music therapist that is the agent of change. Within a clinical therapeutic relationship, applying evidence-based music interventions to accomplish therapeutic goals. This is the website of our professional organization, the American Music Therapy Association. In Music for Life, Music Medicine, the agent of change is the music from all genres. Based upon music therapy principles and neuroscience, you learn how to apply this three-part formula to effectively change mood, behavior, and physiology. Here's an example of how it works. My solo violin music replaced routine post-surgical high blood pressure medication in a hospital. The nurse was astonished that her medication wasn't needed to bring the high blood pressure into normal range. The patient had undergone emergency back surgery, and he reported this overwhelming peace and well-being came over him, and the music effectively changed his mood, his physiology, and his behavior. <coughs> How many here play a musical instrument? All right, keep your hands up. How many sing? In the shower? <laughs> More hands went up, yeah. <laughs> when we play our instrument or sing, it's a cathartic experience. We may feel better afterward, right? But when we don't have our instrument handy, we may be in the car pushing scan on the radio. We're looking for that feel-good music that matches our mood. It's also in training our behavior and our physiology. So how does that work? Music's invisible force influences us as it travels through the air as mechanical energy. When it hits the inner ear, thousands of hair cilia in the basilar membrane dissect and transform all these music elements into electrochemical energy. Music now has whole brain and whole body effect. The brain of Representative Gabriella Gifford was damaged by a bullet. Her music therapist, co-treating with a speech therapist, was successful in remapping the language center into another part of the brain so that Gabby could speak again. And this is Gabby, before, just after, and now. When you don't have a music therapist supporting you, you instinctively push play on music to match your mood. If you're feeling stressed, anxious, angry, depressed, or sad, you sit in that mood with the music and you may get stuck there. Or you may kick yourself into the past where memories live when you listen to music. Or you may kick yourself into the future where you want to be more relaxed or happier. Those listening habits are only temporary solutions for effective stress management. We know that stress is the number one killer. 95% of all disease-related ailments are caused by stress. So when the invisible force of music keeps you stuck in anxiety, you may just feel like you're being excited a lot. Unrelenting anxiety can cause panic attacks and heart attacks. Anger is another misinterpreted mood. 
when you're listening to music, you may be fueling that anger when you feel you're just being energized. Depression may feel like being calm, but everybody else around you is noticing that you're isolating and lacking interest in life. The reality, when you stay stuck in these unsettled moods continually, they can explode into being injurious to yourself or to others. <coughs> Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails says he writes most of his songs when he's in a bad mood. <laughs> his song called Hurt memorializes a band member who committed suicide. That unsettled piece of music appeals to people with depression. When you sit in unsettling music continually, music can provoke harm. So consider creating a music diet that is a balanced one. Just like nutrition and exercise, you have to know what kind of music is the best to support a healthy mind, mood, body, and spirit. I reviewed the playlist of Colby Bezel, who's my war blogger. 80% of his play with playlist was unsettled. The remaining 20% was soothing and some happy energizing songs. That is not a balanced diet of music. And what might stop pain for you could create pain for Colby. It becomes very complex in understanding how you can actually build your capacity to deal with more stress. So let's find out. Do you have a balanced music diet? Go to the Music for Life website. It's free. Fill out the health risk assessment. Get your free top 10 tips to find out what to do. Because when you can do this on a regular basis, the three-part formula, you will notice some significant results using the correct music at the right moment in the best sequenced formula. A female veteran with PTSD and four years on medical disability, decided that she wanted to have an experience with a customized music medicine program. Within six weeks, she reported that she was no longer on antidepressants, no longer on anxiety medication, no longer on pain medication, and her, all her social phobias disappeared. These kinds of significant results can happen on a daily basis when you understand how to use music differently for health and it can save thousands of dollars in health care costs. So I've modernized Dr. Holmes' quote to take a medicinal mood music sequence bath and you will find that it is to the soul what the water bath is to the body. Imagine being able to manage your adrenaline rush in as little as 10 to 15 minutes. Do yourself a personal favor. Discover what your health, what your music says about your health. Flood new playlists with music medicine from your favorite genres and cross-train to new music. Build your capacity to deal with more stress. Use music to power your potential to liberate your peace and your happiness. And now, allow yourself to bathe in this final piece of music. <laughs> 